It is Sunday morning, and I've got some maple brown sugar oatmeal that I put cranberries in. Maple brown sugar is my least favorite type of oatmeal. But we put the cranberries in it, it's okay. Slept pretty good last night. Um, this is probably true before I talk. It got cold. I put my hat on, um, and that was really about it. I didn't change my clothes or anything. I didn't put the fleece on until this morning. It's pretty chilly this morning. Got a little rain this morning. Not real heavy, just a little sprinkle. It's nice and foggy out. It's kind of, uh, I don't know, fall morning. So I got some oatmeal, making some coffee. And I've got kind of a conundrum. So I'm about a little over seven miles in. Next stop's 10 miles. But at that point, we're almost at the end. So I have to make a decision sometime today, probably when I get to the next campground, is uh, is whether or not I just finish the hike today and just do like 14 miles, or if I, I stay one more night. So I think what's gonna happen is, we're gonna kinda see what the next campground looks like, or the next Wayne Forest, like the next camping area where I can camp. And that's gonna be my deciding factor in terms of whether I I stay another night or not. The people that were up here, I apologize for calling them morons. I'm going to take some of that back because they were loud as hell last night, screaming at the moon or I don't know what they were doing. It was a full moon last night and it's like a freaking werewolf convention up there. You got ATVs and they're just randomly screaming at things. They eventually either quieted down or died. I don't know. I haven't been up there yet. Maybe they're all dead. I don't think so, though. I'm hearing hammering already. It's 8 in the morning. What are you hammering at 8 in the morning? Go back to bed, werewolf people. So, so we're going to pack up here. I'm already half packed up. And we're going to scoot. Another problem we have. Water. I'm low. Um, I brought a lot of water in. I read, filled a little bit at Dock 3. Uh, the problem we have in this area, especially Wildcat Hollow, and Archer's Fork and some of the other hikes around here, you can't drink the water. Like, not even if it's been filtered. It has a, it's acidic. So what happened is, they used to mine this area back in the 60s, and from the mining equipment coming in and from the act of mining, it released, uh, it crushed up pyrite, you know, fool's gold, that kind of stuff, and it gets into the water. And it's not like it happened, like, just the one day, like it's been happening forever, and it keeps happening. So... It leaches into the water and it turns it acidic. And you can tell, because if you look at the, the streams down here especially, there's nothing in it. No frogs, no fish, no nothing. Like, they're, they look clean, they look pure, like they're not a weird color or anything, but they're dead. They're dead streams. I know there's some rehab things around here, like they're dumping lime in the streams to make them a little more livable. But I've never seen a dumping station. I'd like to. It sounds kind of cool. I've, I've seen them on, like, video. So I can't filter that water. It's poison. Um, what I need to do is I need to get back to the lake. I need to... These dang hickory nuts, I will tell you, I slept pretty good last night. These dang hickory nuts fall, and some of them make a lot of noise. They need to tone it down a little bit. Anyways, so I need to get back to the lake. Um, I can pump water out of the lake. It's a little better. I looked up a water quality report online, and... Uh, it's okay. Um, it's not great. It's a it's a reserve reservoir, like a backup reservoir. And uh, the water sometimes has high concentrations of ammonia, which isn't great. Like my filter doesn't do that. I don't think my filter filters ammonia. It's more just like bacteria and stuff like that. So, that being said, sometimes the lake tests okay, sometimes it doesn't. So my plan is, without any other option, I'm going to try and pump or filter water from a part of the lake that is not near where a stream comes in. And we're going to go that route. If there's another route, like at that campground I'm going to head to, I can get water there. Um, so hiking down here, to me, the biggest challenge is water. You can stash water or cache water, which for the hike I'm doing right now, not impossible, but I only like realized last night where I could have put the water. 
because um, you can't really stash it here because there are a ton of people here. You have to stash it where there aren't people and someone's not going to grab your water jug and run off with it. So to do this hike again, I know where I can cache water. Um, I don't know, it just takes experience. It's not a big deal. We will endeavor to persevere. Doing the Wildcat Hollow Trail, there are some great places to cache water um, that I already know about. You just have to get out and do it, really, to really find out what to do with all this stuff. So I'm going to stop talking with my mouthful of oatmeal, finish packing up, and uh, hit the old, not the dusty trail, it's, the, it's a very damp trail. Hit the damp trail. Just a damp trail. Oatmeal. Can't, can't talk with you in my mouth. Oatmeal, you make it so hard to talk. My mouth is filled with glue. Voice of a generation. Well, we're all packed up. And it's time to scoot. So I believe I found a discrepancy in my map. So last time I came through here, I'm pretty sure this is the trail I came up and then made a right and I went to Wildcat Hollow. Now, according to my directions, that's the trail I would have been on. That being said, because of that new beautiful bridge, uh, that is the old trail and the new trail's up here. So according to my directions, I was supposed to make a left there and head to a, uh, a bridal trail that's blazed red, and I did get on a red, red blaze trail yesterday, so it looks like they've moved the trail. Um, it was red, blue, and yellow. And then yeah, I was supposed to walk, as I'm walking now, to a post that has a no vehicle sign on it, and make a left. Okay, so yesterday I came out of this area. So the trail is moved, not a huge thing, but if you're not familiar with the area, it could be pretty confusing. Uh, in fact, everything past this post is pretty much new territory for me, so I was a little confused. But here it is. This is the trail I came up yesterday. Now, according to the old the map I have, uh, I should have come up at that point a little closer to Wildcat up there. So, not a big deal. I may have to contact the people who make that map just to kind of... Uh, let them know to let them update because that bridge is new. That bridge is brand new. Now this part of the trail is supposed to be muddier because it is also a bridal trail. So we'll see how that goes. And we'll see if I'm right. And I could be wrong about this, this little detour here, but we're going to find out real fast. <clears throat> I guess the directions need to be changed so that with this, uh, this big, beautiful bridge right here, um, you'd make a left after that bridge to continue on the trail. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, if you were coming in and you were going to Wildcat Hollow, you'd make a right and then head up to that post with the sign on it, make a right and head up the road to Wildcat Hollow. So there apparently used to be a washed out footbridge here. So the trail was rerouted to get around that. But it is clear they have repaired that bridge. So you no longer have to do that. Okay. Let's turn it out to be a pretty nice day so far. Uh, I think the high today is 45, which is pretty good for backpacking. I found this really cool, like old picnic table, and let me move so you can see. Got a cool picnic table and a fire pit that hasn't been used in a long time. It was kind of a cool abandoned scene. We're back on the lake. Sun's coming up. It's a clear day. Uh, looks really nice. Trail's been pretty smooth. Pretty, uh, well, it's been a little muddy because it's a horse trail, you know. And, uh, but besides the muddiness, get back here, besides the muddiness, um, ugh, it's been a little uh, chunky. It's a little rough with the whole, like, you know, where the horses have turned up all of the, uh, the dirt and stuff like that, churned it up, if you will. So we're making pretty good time, I think. I don't know. I have no idea where I am right now. This is all new to me, uh, but this is a nice little. I guess I'm a mile in, maybe. This is a nice little uh, landmark, if you will. A nice little landmark. So I'm going to pack up my gear again and get going.
<sighs> so I just walked up a pretty nasty hill. Um, I'll have to take a look at my GPS and see how steep that was. Uh, but I got to the top of a ridge and here's the horse detour sign. I was just thinking as I came up there, I was like, I'm supposed to be on like a horse path or something? How in the hell is a horse gonna get up this? I mean, I'm sure they can, but with a purse on your back and stuff. And it was, it wasn't so much that it was steep, but it was just a big like muddy rut. It wasn't as much fun as I thought it was gonna be. I'll have to take a look at the GPS here. I ran into a uh, about four white-tailed deer down in the in the hollow, if you will. Well, according to the GPS, that was 800 feet, so it felt like it. Uh, it was a pretty steep incline. It wasn't like there wasn't like a lot of switchback to it. It was just straight up. So we're up on the ridge, and we're gonna uh, keep trucking here. I'm gonna take a look at my map and see where I am because I'm not 100% sure right now. <laughs> well, you know you're on you know you're on a horse trail when you find. Horse poop. Horse poop. Lots of horse poop. It's not super fresh, it's not steamy, but it's the first horse poop I've seen out here. Um, oh, and here's another sign for the horse detour. Um, I need to make sure I go the right direction here because they do tour and go a totally different direction. Here's the horse detour sign. This says here. Same thing, different direction. Okay, so I need to make sure I stay with the. I need to make sure I stay with the yellow blazes, and it looks like we're gonna go uphill a little bit more. This is a, a gentler uphill, though, a kinder, gentler uphill. So we've reached point J on our little map here. We're making pretty decent time. It's almost noon. So it should be about time for lunch here, which will be good. I'm getting hungry. Uh, water situation, I've got a little over a liter left. So I'll need to definitely pump tonight or I'm gonna have trouble. I'm away from the lake right now. Um, this trail is gonna bend back towards the lake eventually, it looks like. so. We're gonna keep going here and hopefully I find a nice spot to stop for lunch. Uh, I'm guessing maybe point K might be a good spot for that, so we'll see. Here's our, here's our map. Yeah. Okay. Got a little, we're shared with a campground trail for a little bit here. We'll go take a look at, uh, we have a number of signs telling us where to go. I figured I'd stop for a minute. Ooh. I figured I'd stop for a minute and have a little lunch. Um, I'm not sure what time it is. I'll take a look at that in a minute. But I'll show you what I have for lunch. Pretty exciting stuff. We've got a little uh, got a little crackers, an onion, cheese, and some trail bologna. So good stuff there. I am ready to eat, that's for sure. See what you do here. Just cut yourself a nice little piece of cheese. There you go. Get yourself a nice little piece of onion here. All right. Get our trail bologna out. I don't always bring trail bologna, but it's cool enough. I'm not worried about it. This isn't as shelf stable as like a pepperoni or something like that. Fold this out. Try and keep it clean since I'll be rewrapping this. Get ourselves a nice little slice of trail bologna here. Thick slice. Thick slice on a cracker. Wish I had some mustard, but I don't. Oh yeah, there it is right there. We're just gonna we're just gonna jam that whole thing right now. Oh, oh it's too big of a piece. 
but it's worth it. Oh, too big though. I've got about a mile to the campground. So hopefully I can get some water because I am just about out of water. And uh, judging from the pee I just took, I'm dehydrated. So I need to get some water in me real quick. So I'm going to saddle up and make this last one mile move. Reload on some water. And then uh, should be uh, about three more miles to where I'm going to be camping roughly. Roughly. We'll see. We'll get an exact total later. And I am sure where I'm going to be. And away we go. So I made it to uh, the top of a pretty decent rise. Got me all lathered up. Let's uh, take a look where we are at point M. So we had a pretty good, that's a pretty quick mile since launch. I don't know how long it took, but it wasn't, it wasn't much. So our first goal before we head to point um, P, no, point N, sorry, P is for parking. Um, by the way, we bypassed L. L is a, it's part of the campground loop, the white loop. So that wasn't part of our yellow um, Lakeview Trail. So I need to find some water, like right now. I'm out and I'm thirsty. So uh, we're gonna do that and we're gonna make a run to point P, which is another 1.2 miles. And at that point, um, yeah, we've got about a little over three miles to get to our final destination, which is only a little after one o'clock. So we're making great time. Uh, so time to go find some water. Once you get to the amphitheater, you go to the road and make a right. Um, if you look, there, there are a bunch of yellow blazes, follow those, and like this sign right here has a yellow blaze on it. <clears throat> and we're going to follow this for just about a quarter mile to a stop sign, and then we'll make a turn off there. Tons of opportunity for water here. I'm totally filled back up. In fact, I had a nice conversation with one of the campers up here. He offered me a beverage, which I kindly accepted, and we shared some fishing and backpacking stories. He, uh, he likes to go brook trout fishing and really nice conversations with some nice people out here as well as some nice nature. I'm kind of, I'll be honest, at this point, I've never been out here. Uh, at least at this point. And I'm a little uncertain as far as where I'm going. My map says go to a stop sign and uh, make a left. So we'll see if we find that stop sign soon. Oh, here's another marker. This makes me feel better. Another little yellow marker right there. Good. At a dump station. In case I needed to empty my tanks, I guess. I don't know. All right. Onward and upward. Literally upward. We're still climbing this hill from a while back. Okay, so just down the hill here, we're still on the road. And we're, this is pretty well blazed, which is nice. 
Um, the, most of these trails have been pretty well blazed. There have only been a couple of sketchy sections. But you can see on the stop sign here, there's a little bit of yellow. And there's also a trail marker here. We make a left, just like the map says. And I can see there are two posts in the ground uh, up here off of this road. And they both have a yellow blaze on them as well. So <clears throat> just what we're looking for. And we are going to get back in it. Uh, not 100% sure how far I have to get. I know that with Wildcat Hollow, it adds a little bit to the length of the hike. Uh, normally it's a 21 mile hike, but this is longer because of Wildcat Hollow, only a little bit. More so because of Burr Oak uh, Cove Campground Trail. I think that adds like two miles or a mile and a half, something like that. So uh, I'm making good time though. I mean, it's still pretty early in the day. I'm not worried about that. I was thinking about finishing today and I kind of decided against that just because I'm not like, I don't know, there's no need to be in a hurry. I'm just gonna enjoy myself, go for a nice walk, enjoy what I see, maybe, I don't know, see something cool. Maybe a bobcat, the fellow I was just talking about that offered me that fine, fine beverage. Uh, said he had a buddy uh, who saw a wildcat over at Wildcat Hollow or somewhere in that general area while he was hunting. And uh, the fellow I talked to said he's got trail cams up over there because he goes hunting over there a lot. And uh, he's got trail cam footage of, of bobcats, which is, that's pretty, that's pretty cool, man. That's super cool. I don't think I'm gonna see any bobcats seeing as how I make a crap ton of noise. Um, I think anything within two miles of me knows I'm coming before I get there, but pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Walk down, we're going down, going down. So most of this trail so far since the campground amphitheater has just been road, which is, I mean, I guess it's still pretty scenic. Let's take a look. We got a nice little, nice little shot of the lake here. I just came from the beach. I passed across here. Not a perfect day. You couldn't ask for anything better than today. Gorgeous, I think is the word. We just keep following the road. It's not a terrible walk considering it is on a road, but uh, we're going to hustle to the marina. And at that point, we're closing in. We've got, uh, I want to say, three miles till I hit the campground that I need to be at. All right. And away we go. Okay, so we made it to the other end of the marina. It's all pretty much a uh, road that I followed to get up to the marina here. So we'll take a little pan around the marina. And we're back to the backpack trail. Everything's been well blazed. We are at points. This is the mark signs right up here. We'll take a look at the we'll take a look at the sign right here. Point N. Let me be the first to welcome you to location N. There we go. So we're making good time. Uh, I don't know again what the trail is going to look like from here because I haven't been over here before. But assuming the trails in Decent condition, not a lot of hills. I've got a little over three miles to get to my final destination, which is the Burr Oak Cove Campground. Now, when I'm telling you mileage and stuff and how far I've gone, I have no idea. Uh, I'm really bad at like estimating that kind of stuff. So it's mostly a guess. It's mostly a guess, mostly a poor guess, not merely an educated guess or Anything good like that, so time to put the camera down and hustle. I got to a point where there was a fork in the path and it looked, I mean, the other side was definitely a trail. 
and I'm looking for the the Burr Oak Cove uh, in the Wayne National Forest. There's supposed to be a white blaze and a sign. There's nothing. Um, if you look on this tree right here, there's a nail that looked like it used to have a white blaze put on it, but I don't see any signs. Um, and I pulled up my GPS, and this is the intersection for sure. Um, so I don't know how well we can see this, but it definitely goes up there, and it's labeled Burr Oak Cove. What does it say here? Burr Oak Cove Recreation Site. So that's definitely a spot to go to. Um, I don't know. That's not good. So somebody's got to definitely put a blaze on here so people know where they're going. So I'm going to head up there and find a campsite, and that's the next plan. So I was looking at the uh, my documentation, my map, and instructions and whatnot that I brought with me. And it says that the borough campground I have to pay to stay at. Mm -mm. No, we don't do that. So what it does say is the connector trail and basically anything that's Wayne National Forest, uh, I can camp there. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm not going to, and plus it's an extra, adds an extra two miles round trip to my, to my hike. So, and I don't have to pay in a campground and have a crappy little site and blah, blah, blah. So I found, uh, I went, took my stuff off and went and scouted around using my GPS to see up this connector trail and make sure I was on Wayne National Forest property and I found some really nice spots. So I'm going to go set up camp at one of those spots here and uh, maybe read a book for a little bit. I hunted around a little bit and checked my map and my GPS a couple times to see where the Wayne National Forest boundary was. So I am uh, dead east of where that trail is. The sun is totally in my eye. Um, just, I, I actually came back the trail and then came back up into the woods to get into Wayne National Forest. From what it looks like, from what I understand, I'm gonna get out of the sunshine here for a second. Um, the Burr Oak State Campground property stopped about a half mile before I got here. And then I'm in Wayne National Forest for a little bit until I get to Tom Jenkins Dam. And then that is the Army Corps of Engineers property and then once I cross that, I get back into the Baroque Campground property or the Baroque State Park property. So uh, I'm going to double check when I get home. I'm pretty sure this is this is a legit like I can be here, you know, without getting in any type of trouble. I don't know what kind of trouble I get into, but um, I'm very certain I'm in Wayne National Forest, which is uh, free dispersed camping. So let's take a look around the joint here. Got my little my little chair set up, just kind of unpacked and cleaned up. Get my gear dried up here. I've got a nice uh, hammock set up going on. There's already a fire pit here. In fact, there were two campsites right next to each other. Oh, there goes my lens cap. There's my fire pit here. Um, in fact, there were two campsites right next to each other and they both had fire pits. So it's clear people have camped here before. Um, and like I said, I'm pretty certain I'm in Wayne National Forest um, property which is where I want to be. Uh, I'm not too far off the trail, and I, since I didn't go to the Burr, Oak, um, the Burr Oak Grove Campground, which is also in Wayne National Forest, but you have to pay there. Because I didn't go there, it saves me 20 bucks or whatever. Um, and it saves me two miles round trip that were totally unnecessary. They're not part of the trail. So I'm gonna camp here tonight. Um, we'll take a look at some, uh, I think I've got, I'm at mile 15 out of it'll be 21 now instead of 23 like 21 to 22 with the extra mileage from wildcat hollow so i should be uh, uh six miles tomorrow which would be my shortest hike so far uh and if, from the looks of it it should be a lot of it should be pretty flat pretty low to the lake that's my guess uh, i'm actually across from the dam right now i might be able to show you we'll see i don't know the uh this is literally like one of the most beautiful campsites I've ever had in my life. It's just absolutely fantastic. Well, uh, it's pretty bright over there. The dam is right over there, okay? And then off to my right, excuse me, off to the right, there's a trail um, off of this campsite that goes to another campsite. Now, when I was coming up the Lakeview Trail, I noticed there was a distinct trail that came up here. So I walked up here just to see what was going on, and I saw this campsite, and I'm like, man, that looks like a campsite, but I wasn't sure if I could stay here. So um, I went back, I set all my gear down, pulled out all my maps, pulled out the GPS, went through, looked at the little tiny lines on my map to see uh, what we're looking at here. And this is pretty good. This is a good spot. In fact, I think 
not only is this a good spot, this is one of the nicest campsites uh, ever, like I've had. Very nice, a lot of shadows the way the sun is. Very pretty campsite, very pretty. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna chill for a little bit. There's already firewood here, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, there's quite a bit of firewood nearby. I don't need a lot. I generally don't have super big fires. Uh, I have a fire, I cook my food, um, and then that's it. I might, I might throw a marshmallow on there later with a graham cracker, but I'm not, I don't have big raging fires. Just a nice little fire to get me through the night. And uh, the other thing is you have a big fire, then you have to put out a big fire. It's a lot easier to put out a small fire. So I'm gonna chill for a little bit, read, and then it's gonna be time to start making some dinner. Took a little rest there. Got a, uh, read my book for a while. It's starting to get dark. It's a little after six, so it's time to whip up a fire. I have very good cell phone reception here, so I was able to call Rebecca and uh, text Madison and let everybody know that I wasn't dying out in the woods somewhere. So that was nice. Yesterday I did a time lapse of my fire. Today we're just going to do it a little little live action. I've got these uh, Vaseline soaked cotton balls here. Um, I think I need a little more Vaseline on them. Yesterday they kind of weren't Vaseline-y enough or something. Kind of gave me a hard time with the fire. Uh, the spot where I'm at right now I love so much. This is like the nicest spot ever. These nice pine needles. So I took my boots off, took my socks off, just kind of walk around with my bare feet. And I'm hanging out the hammock, reading my book. I'm reading Children of Dune, which is uh, Frank Herbert. It's book three in the Dune series. I'm watching people if they're, you know, out here boating and catching fish and, and stuff out here. Uh, I double checked the map too, because I was, I don't want to camp on the wrong spot, you know. Um, I'm definitely, I've been in Wayne National Forest a lot today and I didn't know it. So that's good. Okay. Hopefully that's Vaseline enough. Made some better little fire feather sticks here. A little bit nicer than what I made yesterday. Yesterday was just a bad fire day, I don't know. I don't know what my problem was. What was my deal? So my little feather guys here. I need a bunch. I'll just set them aside the here so they're ready to do their thing. Wipe the Vaseline on the pants. Let's get her started. Lots of this dry pine needle stuff too, which is fantastic. Very nice. There we go. That's how you do that. And that's how you do that. Ooh, that is dry. I cleared off an area around here. I pulled that pine, uh, those pine needles back and from the looks of this, the way that went up, I'm going to burn some of it just to get it out of here. Just to get it away from my fire. And I'm just going to have to be real careful with the fire tonight. Make sure we're extra double super safe. And that stuff goes up like, like wildfire. There's some pine cones on there. Everything's pretty dry out over in this area. This, uh, where I'm at right now, gets a lot of sun. So the wood here is super dry, whereas at Wildcat, nothing really had dried out um, from the last rain. There you go. Get after it, pine cones. Burn them up. Burn them up. So we're going to get this nice little fire going tonight. No steak on the fire. Instead, we're going to do a little, uh, just heat up some water. I got some rice, and uh, I made gravel. In fact, my daughter Madison made the gravel. She helped me out when I was fixing that broken pipe at my house and uh, she cooked up the, the ground beef, mixed it with um, breadcrumbs like I asked her to and uh, then I put it in the dehydrator and when I say I did it I mean she put it in the dehydrator for me, got it all set up, put it on wax paper sheets for me, uh, she did a great job, dehydrated it so it was already dehydrating while I was still trying to fix the pipe and uh, it, it turned out pretty well so we're going to see how the rehydration on that goes. We added the Italian breadcrumbs, uh, not just for seasoning, but also allegedly it'll reheat or, or rehydrate better. So we're going to see how this works. First time I've ever done it, 
I've read a lot about it, so I've been wanting to do it for a while. So I'm really excited for that. Activity on the lake is calming down as the sun goes down. So that's fine. I can live with that. It's a pretty busy lake. I mean, not super busy, but there, there's always someone out there. A lot of pontoons. A big, big pontoon lake. I passed a couple of people on the trail today with their dogs out for a walk or a run or whatever. One was out for a walk, one was out for a run. So I got to pet all their dogs, which was nice. I like petting people's dogs. Um, I never saw them come back through, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they were already had come out or heading home, or if there's some type of loop in here. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I was kind of interested. I was expecting them to come back through because I was hoping I could pet the dogs again. But no such luck. All right, we got our fire. Uh, snapping away here and we are gonna go ahead and get some food prepped all right a little time for some uh, Casey's outdoor cooking network got some green beans to go with our rice tonight some jalapenos I'm probably not gonna eat all of these I might save some of them for uh, lunch tomorrow I don't mind eating some raw green beans for lunch I, uh, these are my green beans from my garden. They're especially tasty because I grew them. They're not bad raw. Really good if you have some hummus or something. That's where it's at right there. You've seen from other episodes, usually I make my own food out of something I, I have, um, like fresh, kind of. Reason why is I watch my salt intake, sugar, fat, all that stuff. And in those freeze dried meals, they're nice and they taste good, but nutritionally, I mean, if you got nothing else going on, I always have one as a backup meal because they are fast. And if it's raining, it's miserable. I'm not cutting green beans. I'm going to heat some water and throw it in there under the tent. So they they have their place, I feel, in terms of, like, my kit. But I don't, uh, I don't usually pack a lot of that stuff. This does take a little bit more work. I mean, not like a ton of work. Isn't that hard? But it's not as easy just boiling up a little water and throwing it in a bucket or throwing it in a bag and letting it sit for 20 minutes. But again, it's not like this is that bad. So we're going to make this. Hey, 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 don't flow away there, jalapeno. Uh, got our jalapenos. We got a bouillon cube, a um, little olive oil. We're going to boil up some rice and rehydrate some gravel. Gravel is the stuff I was talking about earlier my daughter made. So I've got this. It's just like, it's almost like bacon bits, but it's ground beef. I'm not gonna put an onion in today because I think my pot's gonna be pretty full. So we're gonna, we're gonna make that up first. And then when that's done, I'm gonna cook up my green beans and whatnot. I like my little Stanley pot. Uh, it's a great little pot. It's small, it's light, um, it has a lid, so it cooks pretty quick. However, it's, and it also has these little measurements on the inside that I can barely read most of the time. Oh. There we go. Um, <clears throat> it's just not very big. So if we have to cook in two stages, we cook in two stages. Not a big deal, really. There and put that right there. Got a little Uncle Ben's minute rice. This stuff is so much better. The first time I took brown rice backpacking, I just took some regular brown, brown rice, you know, not thinking about it. And it takes like 45 minutes to cook. Ain't nobody got time for that. Mm -hmm. At least I don't. 
going to. That's nonsense. It's starting to cool off quite a bit. It got hot, so I was looking at my phone. Look at the weather channel. It's like 65. I swear it was only supposed to be in the like upper 40s today. But it got pretty hot. I was way overdressed. Way overdressed. That kind of temperature, I'd wear some shorts for sure. And some summer backpacking socks rather than these heavy ones. But, yeah, whatever. What you gonna do? A lot more noise down at the center of the lake. I can hear what I'm guessing is a highway. And I've got two people fishing next to each other. Uh, they're just across the river here, the, the lake. They're maybe 10 feet across from each other and just screaming at each other earlier because apparently you just can't talk to someone. I don't know. All right, I was able to jam the rest of the green beans in there and we just kind of steam them. I'm sure I'm gonna have a little extra soup. I wasn't real precise with the water, just kind of throwing it in as I felt like it needed it. So we'll have a little green bean tea. Check out our goulash. Oh, looks good. I'm looking forward to this one. Oh, we got plenty too, that's for sure. <clears throat> plenty. Take a look at my concoction. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it because it's getting dark. But nice little, you probably can't see that at all, but Where's my, uh, where's my headlamp? <clears throat> this should maybe help with the, the seeing of the masterpiece. Let's get that twig out of there. There we go. Not too bad. Looks good. Looks like the ground beef rehydrated really nicely. How focus is that? And now, it's time to eat. Time to eat, and that won't be much more for tonight. It's getting dark, and obviously when it gets dark, there's not much in the way of picture taken. Oh, this is good. This is really good. I'm very happy with this. Jalapeno adds a little spice. Mm. Beef rehydrated perfectly. Another good dinner. So it's getting late. Uh, it's fully dark now. I've got a nice little nice little fire going with me here. Dinner was fantabulous. It was really good. Um, the dehydrated ground beef was rehydrated great and it was tasty, really tasty. I uh, had to go for a little hike to, to find a place for my bear bag. I love like sleeping in pine tree type areas because it's really soft. It's generally, there's not a lot of clutter. Um, you can walk around your bare feet without much of a problem on the pine needles. However, finding a place to hang a bear bag sucks. So I had to go find a, I found a beech tree, uh, maybe 100 meters back down the trail. Um, this is all just straight pine forest through here. So I had to go for a little bit of a hike, 
not a big deal. My bag is hanging out over the lake. So suck it raccoons, you're not getting that sucker. And that's it, I'm gonna chill. I still think I'm a little dehydrated, so I'm gonna drink a little more water before I go to bed. Um, hopefully not have to get up and pee a bunch of times, but whatever will be, will be, right? So that's it till tomorrow morning. Uh, it's been a great trip so far.